Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the You Haven't Seen That Movie Podcast, a bi-weekly podcast where my guests and I watch a famous movie I've never seen before and discuss it. This week, we're talking about The Color Purple, a 1985 classic starring Whoopi Goldberg, Danny Glover, and Oprah Winfrey. I'm your host, David Lonnie Waters, and in my guest chair today, we have Janelle Sanders. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Uh, that's typically how it goes. <laughs> How's it going? So I I guess before we jump right into I'm going to call you Aunt Janelle. Yes. Uh, it's just only customary. Uh, totally fine. Janelle is my aunt, my dad's older sister? No, I'm like five years younger than he is. Really? You did not know that. I did not know that. You definitely seem more mature than him. <laughs> I'm sure if he listens, to this, I'm sure he'll listen to this one. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Yeah, no, he's he's the oldest, and then I'm five years younger than him, and then Matt is two years younger than me. So oh. I'm the middle. I'm the quintessential middle child. Mm, mm. I feel like before my two younger sisters were born, I was that quintessential middle child, even though I'm a twin. <laughs> Good point. Good point. I was born first, so technically, yeah. 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 <laughs> Only boy too, so everybody loves me. <laughs> anyway, how's it going? Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah y'all just drove in from Chicago. Chicago. Well, yeah. right outside Chicago. Yeah, right? Northwest Indiana. Essentially, it's the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were telling me about y'all's long drive um, from where did y'all stay last night? Um. Mount Vernon, Missouri. They have a Mount Vernon, Texas, too. Do they? I'm sure you'll drive through it whenever you go out to Louisiana. Yeah, it's just north of um, Joplin. Joplin. Yeah, it was just north of Joplin. So (sighs) I picked that because it was, you know, like eight or nine hours and we are traveling with kids. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this will be enough to kind of get us over the halfway mark and what was supposed to be eight hours took like 12, like 11 or 12 because mm-hmm. we had to stop because we do have an infant traveling with us. So, yeah, yeah, that's fun. But they're having a good time and we will, too, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Driving really like those long. Tri- I, I personally hate road trips. I just yeah, yeah. I was telling you in the car, just like, I can't believe y'all road tripped it. I I used to, when I lived in Denver, I would road trip it here to North Texas. Mm-hmm. And that that's about 12 hours. Um, but I would split it up because like, I would stay in Amarillo and then the second day um, wow. head here. And I was just like, Ugh. Yeah, that's, I, I can't do this trip in one day. I, oh. if, if it was just us, you know, me and my husband, then maybe I could. But with little kids... I ain't trying to feel that life. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, I saw your status update yesterday. Like, here, or was it this morning? Like, are we there yet? <laughs> literally, like, we, not even 15 minutes into the drive. Oof. Are we there yet? That would drive me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Are we? And it's been all about Texas. Are we in Texas yet? When we get to Texas, can we go swimming? Are we in Texas yet? I'm like, whenever I came to met y'all, uh, Lucas, uh, my cousin's kid, he is like harping on the swimming pool. <laughs> he is obsessed. Really? Is there a swimming pool in Texas? I'm sure there's plenty of there them. There is many, <laughs> many, Lucas. Oh my goodness. But this one's outside, so that will be a thing for him. But yes, he does love to swim, and it's not something he gets to do a whole lot. Right. So. Up there, um, do y'all like have pools that are like enclosed or whatever? I mean, just, like, it's so cold. Uh, it's not a common thing for people to have a pool outside, right? Like mm-hmm. it's hmm. not at least not in our area because you have to like close it and open it and do all this work and stuff. We personally don't have a big enough yard oh. for a pool. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you want to swim, like you either go to the water park. Or you go stay at a hotel that has a pool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, we don't. Hmm. We don't have like a, you know, like in the colony they have like a public pool. Right. You know, mm-hmm. we don't have that. No, nothing um, like that. Hmm. So culture, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, Indiana culture, for sure. Yeah. I guess before we kind of jump into the opening segment, uh, if you want to show your support for the You Haven't Seen That Movie podcast, check out our Facebook group and our Instagram page. And Janelle, what have you been watching as of late? This is a opening segment that I want to 
what have I been watching? Jeez oh, Louise. Are you know. one um, to pop on Netflix at night? I do. Just kinda... Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know what we really do a lot, especially if Mike's home? We watch Big Bang Theory. Like reruns, like we watch Big Bang Theory all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. But if he's not home, I'm notorious for picking out a chick flick oh. and watching that or whatever's on. Like, What's your favorite? Uh, my favorite? Yeah. Uh, 50 First Dates. 50 First Dates. Yes. That's the Drew Barrymore. Yes. Adam. Yes. Uh, you know, I, any actually <laughs> any Adam Sandler movie that's like that, I'm down for it. Just go with it. Um blended 51st dates oh, okay. any you like the of, wedding singer i lo- love love Oof. Yeah. the wedding singer is one that i you know people give me a lot of a lot of shit for her. i don't like drew barrymore too much i love See, adam Mike sandler does not like her either and i'm like how that's if I if there was a movie out of my life, that's who's gonna play me. Oh, is Drew Barrymore? I could see that. I could totally <laughs> see that. That's awesome. Yeah, that or uh, Emma Stone. If I'm feeling like good, mm-hmm. you know, like she could pull, you know, she could she could do she could do an impression of me. But Drew Barrymore is probably like my my animal spirit or whatever. You know, uh, like nice. that's that's who I would, That's who my go to is. Nice. Yeah, I I don't. Like, I don't have, like, a real disdain for it. I just never, you know. Uh, it's not your favorite. Yeah, yeah. I do love Adam Sandler, though. So, mm-hmm. like, anything they're paired up in, I'll, yeah. you know. I like Fifty First First Dates. I don't, say, I don't want to say I love it, but yeah, um, it's a good one. That's my favorite. Yeah. Probably my favorite favorite. It's my favorite concept or, like, mm-hmm. movie plot, I guess. I mean, it's them. just an interesting story, too, you know? Like, totally. Can you imagine if that would happen? Um, would, like, no, every not at day all. you don't remember stuff? And and then your like dad like, I guess continues that. Yeah. I don't I don't know like I I don't know like exactly how that like the amnesia. I mean, thing it's got to be a real thing, right? Oh, it's a totally. real thing. Oh, totally. If but Alzheimer's is a real thing, then this is totally that's, a real see, thing. That's so true. So. Yeah, except you're young. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I like. I like to watch chick flicks. Um, nice. I you know. It's just girly stuff, really. I don't like horror movies. I don't like. Um, I like Big Bang mm-hmm. or you know comedy sitcoms or whatever, right? Um, or Just whatever's a- playing. Like I don't even know. I watch some. Uh, what's that guy's name? <sighs> Kevin Kevin Hart and oh. the one guy that plays Olaf. I can't remember his name either. But they were in, oh the 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 best. It was like the best man or the wedding. It was kind of like the wedding planner, but mm-hmm. from a dude's point of oh. view where he is netflix uh yeah i think it was on netflix hmm. actually it might have been on the tv <laughs> <laughs> yeah like on like youtube tv or something but mm-hmm. so uh the guy doesn't have any friends kind of like the best man but is that the movie the best man uh i love you man i love you man yeah, yeah it's kind of mm-hmm. like that except this guy owns a business and he hi he's he like hires himself out to be a best man and he like does the full spread of you know getting other groomsmen and throwing parties and stuff like that and it's kind of like that kind of like hitch you know nope never seen it (gasps) oh god Uh, okay put that on your list (laughs) right um you know i was about to ask you your recommendations yeah Yeah. hitch is is very good and will smith you know you, you can't go wrong with will smith right um Hmm. But it's yeah. kind of like it's kind of like that where like these men who don't do well in social situations or whatever mm-hmm. hire another man to kind of prep them or groom them or you know, help <laughs> them out, them, you know, but... <laughs> like teach them how to dance, how to dress, how to talk, all that stuff. Right. Um, like yeah. the yeah. Good. Yeah, that's I like. That. I would definitely put that on <laughs> <laughs> Hitch. Okay. Yeah, there are so many good movies on the list that you sent me, and I was like. What the heck? I can't. You know how hard it is for me to pick out a movie between him and I just sitting there like on a Wednesday night or whatever. Right. And you send me a list of like 300 things. I'm like, what the fudge? Mm, I can't. Right. Yeah, it is. It is a lot. Everybody who I have on is just like, oh, my God, that is so many movies. Like, do you ever watch movies? No, no, not at all. I personally, like lately, I've watched there's this one Netflix show called Love. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's just like about this 
dude and this chick who like have their own problems, but they meet by chance. And like this, it's funny. They meet in this like convenience store and she doesn't have her wallet on her. And she's like cussing at the dude. Cause like, come on, it's a cup of coffee. Like, just let me, let me have it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to throw it away if you don't. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I haven't heard of that, but there's so many good movies on Netflix and so many just random, like they're not even like well-known actors or actresses or anything mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, those, you just tend to be like, I don't know that movie. And so you just move on. So yeah. sometimes I'll just go in for like a rant. I'm like, I don't know what this is about, but. Right. I mean, every movie that's out there, or I guess movies like you haven't seen before, like that's every movie at one point for you. So, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I watched that. It was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I watched, um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately. Um, I, I'm definitely one to go down the rabbit holes. Okay. So don't get me started on this, but one of my secret obsessions, it's not even an obsession. I watch cleaning videos on YouTube. Oh yeah. It's fall Was on it the like treadmill. the, the res- uh, restoration ones? No, or like- just women cleaning their house. Really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So that's what I, I get on the treadmill in the morning, you know, do a little two mile walk mm-hmm. and, um, I watch. Huh. random women cleaning their house. Sometimes they do like crafts with their kids and uh-huh. little things like that. But yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I like, like that. She's like, are you seriously watching this? And Abby too, my daughter, you yeah. know, she, she's like, why? I said, listen, if you can watch people playing video games on YouTube, I can watch women right, cleaning on exactly. YouTube. There's two there. I, okay. So I have two things. One, uh, in regards to the cleaning, I watched this one where he, he'll, Like, I guess he'll go to these garage sales or whatever and get, Mm -hmm. um, like, just like a. I'm thinking specifically about like, um, game controllers, like video game controllers. And they're just like really nasty Mm -hmm. being in these like garage sale, but he'll like restore them to like pristine or even above pristine. And oh, I love that. There was a two, there's satisfying. Whenever I lived in Denver, I would, I was way more into YouTube back then. And I, Spent a whole Saturday one time watching this dude build a log cabin <laughs> from start to finish. I would do that. And I then I actually went to his channel and uh, found like a five minute time lapse of it. And I was so, I was so mad. I was so mad. You're like, I couldn't watch this in five minutes. I just spent my entire summer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My entire day was just wasted. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Yeah. No, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, love I, it. I do love YouTube. I will not lie about that. Mm-hmm. Guilty pleasure. Definitely. Yep. So I guess we don't have much. I don't have any podcast updates, but I do want to mention the voicemail again. Um, I know I harp on it every episode, but I think I'm going to start to do um, prompts, like voicemail prompts. Mm -hmm. Um, You know how like I tease the episode or whatever, like in the you know days after. I'm I'm thinking about doing it like the week after the episode airs or whatever, and just putting a little prompt and giving the number or whatever. And I I think I may even do that myself. I like, you know. I like. actually have no idea even what my voicemail sounds like. <laughs> it's like probably just the generic like robot voice. Leave mm-hmm. a message, babe. Um, right. But no, that's a good idea. You yeah, should do yeah. that. So call the voicemail if you want. And Janelle, let's hop into uh, The Color Purple. Yeah. So why did you pick this movie? Well, out of all of the movies that you got or, you know, that you sent me, um... That is, like, on my, you know, like, top whatever favorite, like, all-time movies. It gives me emotions every time I watch it. No matter how many times I've watched it, it makes me feel that way. Oh, yeah. No. And I I teared up multiple times in the movie. It's just that... I think I'll definitely get into my likes, but I want to mention it here. It's just like the, I feel like the orchestral soundtrack for the movie, like really like elicits those emotions, like yeah. builds it up, so to speak. Yeah. And oh my gosh, like whenever she was reunited, reunited with Nettie at the end of the movie, like that's, uh, and like yeah. her children or mm-hmm. whatever. And yeah. I was just like, oh, this is good. It's good yeah. shit. It's yeah. Good shit. I, I just, um, was trying to watch it on the, on the trip and, um, we went through some really like rural areas mm-hmm. and it was like meh, circling and I'm like, <laughs> well, I guess that was done. Um, so, but I've seen it numerous times to, mm-hmm. you know, know, 
Right. Uh, what when did you outlet. first watch it? I mean, it's 1985. When do you, what year were you born? Uh, I was born in 1974. 74. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you said it on me. <laughs> I'm old but, compared to probably the people you usually have on your podcast. I'm, you know, I, right. I, I had like a, I think he was like 40 something. Oh, okay. Uh, a gross point blank. This uh, oh, okay. most recent one. I yeah. think it was like 40. I'm, Jeff I'm was 46. Uh, yeah, 46. Sometimes I forget how old I am, but... <laughs> Sam, so um. I'm, I'm 27. <laughs> I was about to say 28. And then that's like the perfect example of me uh, um, forgetting. But Yeah, I honestly, I was thinking about that when I thought maybe you were going to ask me that. And I'm thinking, I literally don't, I don't know. But I know that I was, I think I was in high school. Mm. I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, okay. Cool. I remember, so my mom's, your granny's... Mm-hmm. Or you call her Granny, or yeah, okay, Granny Lizzie. Um, when she was married to her second husband, I think they watched it, and maybe I watched it after them, or something like that. And he had made some comment like, "Like if this movie does not, basically, if this movie does not bring you to tears, then you're like not human, <laughs> you no know." Soul, yeah. And like he was kind of a rigid, maybe a little on the autistic spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um scale and for him to say that was like you know powerful a deep movie then you know so i think maybe that's why i watched it i'm not i honestly don't remember i just Mm -hmm. every time i watch it i just yeah yeah no definitely i i personally uh it's based on a book have you ever read the book i have not but i have read other um books of hers alice Um, walker alice walker Yeah, yeah there's one um the Temple of My Familiar is the other book. That's the only one that I've read of mm-hmm. hers. And then I, I have it. Black Witchcraft or something. I don't oh. I don't even know. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I should. I mean, it's, this has been years, years, years ago. That I'm pretty sure it's still on my bookshelf. But right. yeah, it's, you know, it's about being a black female. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. Like I, that. you know, personally, I, before you, <laughs> did you find this movie on the list? I did. You I did. Was, okay. Wasn't cool. It? Yeah. Well, I. You know. Honestly, I. <laughs> did you make the list? I have put so many movies on there just by like you know I'll I'll get these recommendations I'll just throw and not it on not there to call record. you out but there are duplicates on the list. Oh, totally. I, totally. I was like, I wonder if he knows that this is on here more than one time. That must mean it's a good movie. Definitely. <laughs> Whenever somebody brings up a recommendation, I'll just jot it down real quick. I won't even think twice yeah, about it. Yeah. Like, on no, occasion, I, I I looked at it like maybe. Probably five or six times. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't, I'm gonna have to pick them up. I don't know. Right. And that was one of the ones that, that stuck out to me. But yeah, it's definitely like on my way top, you know. Yeah, yeah. Premium. De- definitely. Likes. I think now that I've watched it, yeah, it's kind of on my top. It's, it's a great movie. But yeah. we'll, we'll get into it okay. definitely. Um, like other than that, you know, Whenever you mentioned it, that's kind of like the first time I kind of heard of it. I, it was just one of those random recommendations that I got, so I knew nothing about it. Okay. Um, whenever I looked it up, whenever we were talking, I uh, noticed Oprah, and I know that she had been in movies before, but I, you know, I never seen her acting chops, mm-hmm. so I, you know, I was excited to to see what she could do. Yeah. So. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the plot. We'll kind of, you know, suss through things there. Um, you know, first you kind of get the, uh, relationship of Nettie and, uh, Seely, Mm -hmm. um, you know, sisters, Sisters. they're great. Played by Seely's played by Whoopi Goldberg. I love Whoopi Goldberg. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I love the movie sister act. Oh. So <laughs> yes, much that is a good movie. it hurts. Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. Sister Act too as well. But yeah. oh, I love For Sister sure. Act so good. <laughs> uh, but uh, do you know the other person uh, who played Nettie? I actually don't. Don't. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. yeah. You know. I. I'm I don't think it's sure. really. She's not in the movie as much as no, Celia is. No. So um, great, great actress. Um, but I don't recall having ever seen her in. Anywhere really else. anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, the story, I guess, it, you know, kind of starts. Uh, I wrote down they time jump a lot in this movie, mm-hmm. uh, but I wrote down that it like extended from like 1909 to like 1937 was the yeah. last, 
year that I saw yeah. to, or time jump or whatever you want to call it. She, you know, it being only, what is it? In this, it's like 20 high 20s uh, with a year, like 28, I guess. I'm not going to do this quick math in my head. But, no. Um, she looks way older. Well, I mean, she did go through some shit. So, yeah, yeah. Um, she but she looked way older towards yeah. the end. Well, of the I day. mean, if you think about it, like she, when when the movie starts, she's like 13 or 14 years old. Oh, okay. That you is know, true. so she's, she's, I, w- I want to say 14. I want to say 14. So she has her second baby at 14. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can imagine that would weather somebody <laughs> yeah definitely definitely so yeah and you know that's the next thing like uh she you know has the two kids mm-hmm. and um her mom dies like it's kind of uh, at least for me it was insinuated that like Nettie had told or excuse me Celie had told their mom about the two children and it, it mm-hmm. like killed her or something yeah. well like. so here's the thing um I don't know who told the mom, but so the dad, Mm -hmm. and I'm using air quotes here, the dad Mm -hmm. was the father of Celie's two babies. Right, yeah. So he got her pregnant. This Mm -hmm. is who she thinks is her father. Right. And he tells her as he's taking the baby girl out of her arms. Right after. Don't you tell your mom it will kill her. Mm. And then they jump into the scene of them marching yeah. her mother's coffin Cut, right, to yeah. the cemetery. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know if they told her or she just found. I mean, how do you not know that you know your fourteen year old is pregnant or whatever? Yeah. Maybe they just found out that he was the one, and that was that's the, the death mm-hmm. part of it. Yeah, it was. Definitely I don't know if it's explained in the book, but it's not clear. It's very you know implied Mm -hmm. yeah definitely so i mean even after that it you know it says that like Nettie doesn't want to stay there uh, yeah because the father's making advances and stuff so yes yeah uh pretty you know some dark stuff it it starts it starts off heavy you know right away Mm -hmm. like immediately so you know uh, i guess from there we kind of get introduced to uh danny glover's character Mm -hmm. mister um i personally i have never seen i probably seen a few movies with him as like a you know tertiary character or whatever mm-hmm. but yeah. like i know he's famous for the lethal weapon movies yeah. which yeah. i've never seen before <laughs> do you like those ones i mean you know they're just dude flicks to me i oh. i like them but i would probably not like go pick them out for myself oh I see. but i wouldn't turn it if it was mm-hmm. if it was on yeah it's on the list i <laughs> They made like four of them, mm. so it's like they're amusing. Amusing, yeah. there yeah. we go. And was Mel Gibson? He's, Mel Gibson, yeah, right. yeah. He's Christ. the other. <laughs> he's the other character in in those movies. So, but yeah, different, totally different, oh. like set of roles. Definitely, I mean, this and is like some deep acting stuff in this one. Oh, definitely. I one thing I didn't. Well, I had thought before. You know, Childish Gambino. His name is Donald Glover. Who is this? Uh, Childish Gambino. I don't know? know who that is. Have you ever seen Community before? Oh, like it's a show where they like an older person goes back to college or no? Yes, yes, is it that, is. Okay. Uh, he is the black gentleman who's the. I think he's the only black gentleman, like the one of the main characters or whatever. I don't remember. It's very equivalent to Big Bang Theory a little bit in my mind. Oh, okay, okay. So, but nonetheless, I figured out that they are not related. <laughs> Oh, you thought they were related oh, the whole oh, time? Totally. Like it's gotta be Danny, a Donald. Hey, you <laughs> know they're twins. <laughs> Maybe like second removed or whatever the heck. He's a it's little bit funny. younger, but nonetheless, um, you know. Uh, after that, uh, you know, this is Danny Glover. He's introduced as I guess he's this man in church that you know really has a liking towards Nettie. Towards and, Nettie, yeah. Uh, approaches the father and is like, "Hey, I want to take you know Nettie's hand or whatever." And off limits, the yeah. father, you know, no, kind of wants to keep Nettie, yeah. you know, yeah. for exactly obvious reasons. You know, it's kind of implied, definitely. <laughs> but he says that he could take Celie, yeah, um, and it kind of like parades her out, and even the child, um, I can't remember the child's name, but was just like, "Why is she like doing this like?" Turn around yeah, thing like for this they're man. Like, make like teasing her like uh yeah. like oh god, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that was odd, but you know, I guess just because 
Danny Glover just wanted, you know, a wife or yeah. he wanted Nettie well, specifically. Yeah, but. he I mean he really had a liking for Nettie because she you know, she was cute and stylish and smiley and all that stuff, but he um Mister's previous wife had died. And I, they don't get go into any of that, but he's got children as well, so he he needs an, another wife, mm-hmm. you know. And why not pick one that's cute to look yeah, at? Yeah, take it, take it or leave it, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, it, you you said it like uh, wasn't there like four or five kids it was already? A lot. Yeah, like yeah. already there from the yeah, previous from the previous. You know? um, so yeah, I'm sure that's a lot to take on, even like at a moment's whim. I mm-hmm. mean. 1909, definitely a different time. Yeah. But still, though. Like, and fine. their mom is is dead. You know, like, Net- Nettie and Celie's mom's dead now. So they, it, I think it is time, like, for them to fly the coop or whatever. They, they have to go get married. And he says to him that, um, that, uh, Celie's older. So she should be married first anyways. Oh, that is right. You know. So, but no, you can't have Nettie. Right. Yeah. And, and period. Yeah. Uh, that kind of kick starts it in a pretty much the whole movie is kind of based around that relationship mm-hmm. between Celie and, and Nettie. Um, what's a, uh, they don't even mister. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was well, like his, thinking of Danny. The, later on, they call him Albert. Albert. Yeah. Yeah. But she refers to him as mister. Mister. Mm-hmm. Mister. Yeah. So it's kind of framed around that. And, um, you know, there's Nettie. She actually, the next part, she kind of is just over her father, uh, make of those advances or whatever. Yeah. And she comes Shows to up. live with them for, uh, I don't know how long it, it I don't think it was very long. long maybe less than maybe six months. I would maybe Assume. say, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm enough for her to teach her how to read. So yeah, Nettie mm-hmm. teaches Celie how to read so that they can, which is a great, it's a great scene. I love that yeah. one in particular. She's just like trying to, it's funny because like she'll, uh, Albert or whatever, Mr. He like accepts that, you know, she's going to stay there or yeah. whatever. And, uh, <laughs> I like that scene, like right after she's like making fun of Albert. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, she's uh, mocking him clean, like clean in private, the, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah. they, you know, make this pact to, you know, yeah. learn to yeah, cause read she, and she write. She said that she's going to have to, you're going to have to leave soon before he, he starts, starts hitting those. on you. And, mm-hmm. um, so she, she's like, well, how will I talk to you? And well, we could write. And she's like, well, you know how to read. And she's like, well, no, but right. I can go to school for both of us and I'll teach you. And that's, that's what she did. And she did a very, very good job. Of that, oh, I think. oh my gosh. You know? So much. So like, I love that scene because she's just like, she lifts up her stocking and there's yeah, that like yeah. pin to it. Yeah. Like, That's a stocking. Yeah. Like I know that one. Yeah. It's very, very cute. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I love this. One of the things about, it. I'm as serious as this movie is, mm-hmm. there are little bits of whim and, uh, great vocab cute, word, you know, whim. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just little cute, whimsical, little funny things that mm-hmm. happen just you know like in real life right um majority of it's very serious but they do cut it with some slices mm-hmm. like yeah, that definitely interstitial and i i quite enjoy that because sometimes we need a break i even yeah i think i was talking um i was watching have you ever seen the exorcism of emily rose i said yes. uh, you don't like yes. i don't scary movies, but i but do that's side note but that's i i don't like scary movies but anything with like kind of ghosty or possessions or like witches Mm -hmm. or even vampires i'm okay with but gore or zombies no a little bit more (laughs) yeah gore yeah Yeah, i'm like no can't do it Mm -hmm. yeah so that was good i like that i guess i forgot where i was going with that thought um (laughs) sidetracked you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so I like the the reading scene. I thought that was very yeah. that was very nice, and it, it was a through line definitely because they started writing letters. It, yeah. You know, I um, will tell you that one of my favorite scenes, like while we're still in that mm-hmm. area, right. is when she first comes to his house, and so now she's going to be his wife. They skip over the marriage scene and blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and his kitchen is just. Filthy. It is awful. It's just caked in dirt and just everything. So she comes in 
with the bucket and the rag and she starts wiping the walls and there's little flowers under there and she and just and it transforms into this beautiful place and everything's organized and she's got the shelves you know mm-hmm. uh, bottles of stuff up right. on the silverware nice you know, and cleaned and up on the table it's like the most satisfying you know back to my cleaning <laughs> obsession uh the most satisfying you know, like transformation. Definitely. That she's like, you know what? This is my life. I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to like, you know, transform this space. Right. You know, and she's really trying to be like Positive a wife, about you it. know? Yeah. Like, you know, and it's funny you say that because I had that thought right as the, that scene had happened. I was like, you know, though, and it's very early in the movie, like we said, yeah, it moves really yeah. fast. The dire, I guess, tones of the beginning of the movie comparatively with that scene and her just trying to make the best of her, you know, I guess just making the best of a bad situation mm-hmm. um, and trying to do her best. Mm-hmm. It definitely shows there. And I was like, damn, like, did you catch her- that line when, uh, when they're outside hanging her ceiling and you're outside hanging laundry and she's like, you know, you need to stand up for yourself. And, and she says, I don't know how to do that. All I know how to do is survive. Right. And it's like, Dust right. Deep. Yeah, definitely. You know. Definitely. It's funny you mentioned that scene, and you know what the thing was on my mind was them fucking kids like, <laughs> like ruthless. T- tore just tore down the ruthless. sheets, and then even Albert like pulls it down to where the sheets are on the ground. Like you son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, ready yeah. to be some. Yeah, shit. they they kind of. I mean, actually, when she first shows up at their house, one of them throws a rock at her face, right, and says, "You ain't my mama." Mm. And, you know, so she's wrapped up in a bandage and, you know, she's like, well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, uh, you know, that's, I guess from there, you know, Nettie is kicked out. Uh, Albert starts to make advances. Yes. There's a really, really that's awful. The uh, hardest scene. Yeah. Whenever oh, he's riding the horse and she's trying to go to school. That's when I started crying. Oh, man. That is, a, that is a very ominous scene and that mm-hmm. is scary like whenever he disappears from the horse and tries mm-hmm. to like love how she kicks him in the balls and yeah. goes yeah. on but uh yeah oh my gosh was i not stressed out during that scene it was it that that's really what made me like start crying like he's literally like throwing her clothes over the fence like ripping them apart mm-hmm. um she they're screaming like just clutching each other. Please, please I'll do anything. Don't make her leave. Don't make her leave, you know and right. and he's like like hitting hitting them, yeah. you know. They like, try to like hold onto the like, pole and the tree or something, and he's banging their fist and and it just oh it's just <sighs> it's heartbreaking. Yeah, the you know, I'll get into my dislikes, but I just I I anytime I see domestic violence, even if it's in a it's movie, hard. I'm just it's so hard for me to watch. Mm-hmm. I just don't Yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's awful. Mm-hmm. It's awful. So uh that scene was very moving because, you know, she was like, right, uh, whenever, I guess, she finally, Albert got her past that point of her, of his land, like, she was sealy, she was, like, very timid, but, like, right, very, right, just yeah. said the word right, and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it turns out, you know, she did right, it kind of, it made me think, uh, you've seen The Notebook, yeah? Yeah. Um, it definitely reminded like, reminded me of that movie uh, yeah. so much so because like he hid the letters or yeah. whatever same as the mom yeah. did in that yeah. one so oh yeah. yeah yeah so I yeah it was definitely a touching scene because you could just see like from all around great acting but in that scene in particular just like the love that they shared mm-hmm. um, you could see like her heart breaking because she had to leave yeah. or whatever yeah. so uh, I know I was watching it today and was thinking why didn't she just leave with her. But, you know, it just, it gets complicated. I mean, they're still very young, you know, like maybe 15, 16. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, what are they going to do? Right. Yeah. I mean, back in But that and time. she and Celie, she's just a very timid uh, person, mm-hmm. you know. The mm-hmm. character herself is just, um, she doesn't talk back. She doesn't you know, speak up for herself. So she wasn't about to mm-hmm. run down the street with her. Like I'm going with my sister. Bye. Right. You know, I mean like mm-hmm. today that would have been a thing, but well, definitely. back then. Mm-mm. Yeah. Maybe not. So you kind of, I don't even, it's not security, you know, in that fact, it's just, you know, like you said, Tim, she's just timid yeah. and kind of goes with the flow, yeah. so to speak. But 
yeah, very, very, you know, heartbreaking scene, uh, definitely. But, you know, from there we kind of move. Uh, that's when you get introduced to Oprah's character. Yes. And uh, her name is Sophia in this movie. Yeah. And her and Harpo, which is... I guess through the whole movie, um, I, I guess you were talking about earlier the cleaning scene. Whenever everything's nice and pristine, mm-hmm. uh, it shows it shows all this pristine stuff, and like Danny Glover like pops his nasty this, yeah, feet up on the his table, boot up on the table, and, and he tells Harpo to, oh, many his, times to go horse. saddle his horse <laughs> or you know mold on the saddlebag or whatever. It. I'm getting it. I'm, I'm, doing it mm-hmm. yeah. so we this i think this is where we do the first time jump and uh, harpo's older and yeah. he brings sophia home to mm-hmm. meet uh mister yep yep so um i love 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 oprah in this movie she yeah. is so good and uh you put it down at the beginning but this is like i guess this is one of oprah's first um movies, movies. to act yeah. in mm-hmm. so yeah no she's just strong independent woman like she don't care Mm-mm. She don't care about Albert. No, like, who cares? She's not scared of him one bit, Mm-mm. and she ain't scared of Harpo either. Yeah, <laughs> I think Harpo's scared of her. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely loved her character. Um, and I guess we also get introduced to Shug, uh, mm-hmm. and kind of right after it. Um, I guess I can't remember exactly what happens at the beginning with Harpo and Sophia. They get married. They yes. live. Yeah, so she oh. she's pregnant at mm-hmm. first when they come to meet Mr. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, you know, him or me or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so he marries this girl, but she's like a tough chick. Oh, you know, she's she's in charge. She's wearing the pants in the family. Oh, definitely. You know, um, when I feel like whenever she comes on to the land that she she is running tell. that. Mm-hmm. She's running the show mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh yeah, so love that, and you know, uh, that's when we kind of get introduced to this other character, Suge, and this mm-hmm. is the, I guess, love interest of yes. Albert, Mister. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, he, it's very vague at the beginning of it of who she is. It kind of yeah. he's hints- been he's been waiting for he's been waiting for her like since basically since she showed up. Right. He's been waiting for every time the mail comes. You know, he's like waiting for a letter from her. And in the beginning, it shows a clip of a letter from Suge to Albert saying, Mm -hmm. basically, sorry, I can't see you this time. I'll catch you next time. Love you. Bye. You know, Um, like I'm not coming to visit. And then, you know, like years and years go by. And then she she shows shows up. up. There's a great, I guess, scene right before she's her introduction. She um, it goes stormy. And yes. it's like, I knew something was coming. Like something was she, going on. uh, Celie narrates like, uh, whenever she says like, dear God, uh, yes. she kind of she talks narr- to God a lot during, mm-hmm. during the movie. And she was like, and I then, feel something coming. And then like mm-hmm. Shug shows up yeah. or whatever. And she's, uh, drunk. It looks like she has some problems with alcoholism. Um, I think that's what well, it was. she's a, she's a singer. She's a, Comes with the territory. You know, what's the word, you know, when you're like a jazz singer or something? I don't know. But yeah, so she's, she's at the Off club. Off the rocker. <laughs> she's, all, she's at the club a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yes, when she shows up, she's, she's probably more than maybe she's like an alcoholic or yeah, having th- some sort of I don't, thing. At least at first I thought it actually whenever she's taking she's the sick bath. She's some, sick at some point. Some form or fashion, she's she's sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think dependent because whenever she was taking a bath and uh, Celie was like helping her or yeah. whatever, uh, had that I guess gin or vodka bottle in her hand. Yeah, and, um, yeah. Some, that's when like she's gone on in her life that's made her down. Yeah, I, it, I mean she goes into it. She's talking about her dad, the relationship with she yeah. has with her dad, yeah. which is actually the preacher of a church that's really close by close. to this mm-hmm. farm, mm-hmm. and. That's a through line throughout the whole movie, but her relationship uh, with her father. Mm-hmm. Another I- one of my favorite scenes, real quick, mm-hmm. is also when when Suge shows up. Now Albert is waiting on her hand and foot. I know, you know? that was and such so a dramatic change. In, yeah, so she comes in and he's like bringing her in, and she's like just blah, you know. When she looks at Celie, and Celie's like, I have to see this woman, mm-hmm. you know, look her in the eyes. I have to see her eyes, you know, and uh, she can't move. And so she looks up and she tells Celie, she's like, 
you're ugly <laughs> you know like you you're ugly mm-hmm. and she's like what the heck What's you know <laughs> so now i was running around like trying to make her feel better and mm-hmm. run her bath and make her food roll reversal to the oh, max my oh God. my goodness he yeah. definitely so she in- has his number for sure definitely. she knows how to call the shots and um so he goes in there and he's trying to like make her food. Yeah. He don't know what he's doing in the kitchen. Not at all. Right? So he blows up the freaking stove and Celie just pulls up and she's trying to tell him like what to do. And finally she pulls up a rocket chair and she's like uh she's sitting there, <laughs> she's twirling her hair and like like hanging out, like, what is he doing? And then he brings in this big old kerosene thing. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you just see this poof. Flame, you know, and yeah. then the rock she's done. She's out. She's mm-hmm. out of the rocking chair. I thought and that he part brings was... her this tray of like flaming food. <laughs> that she, <laughs> she proceeds to throw it at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. But then Celie like cooks, like she's like, Okay, I'm mm-hmm. gonna do this. Right. And again, best one of the like just it just looks good. Like that food like, looks good. I want to eat now. Like you hungry. know, like she's got like a ham steak and some grits and eggs and biscuits and all this stuff. And she brings it up and she, she's like, I'm gonna sit back and wait and see what, what color no. the walls, right. you know, makes and mm-hmm. and she likes the food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she. Uh, I love that part in particular because, like she, like you said, she pulls up that rocking chair, and just yeah. like watching him, just chilling out. Like he's asking so many questions about mm-hmm. how to do everything, and I think that's when she first learned his name, Albert. Yeah, and yeah. she's like giggling because <laughs> yeah. I actually personally think- I think that was a little bit. It was. In the same time frame, but mm-hmm. a little bit later. right. So yeah, I think I just or like no, her. No, she like, did. She said Albert. Like, and she started giggling. You're right. Mm-hmm. It was during that scene. And so yeah, I, I love I love that. Uh, just change. Yeah, it kind of have, like makes her, I think, a little less afraid of him. Totally. Because now she sees a different side. She doesn't just see the like mean, you know, ready to like beat. Yeah, the bold side of him. Now it's like, like oh my god! Right? Like, yeah, this is he a, this is a pathetic around. Yeah, you know exactly. So that was fun. Uh, I really like that, and I guess from there, there's a couple quotes that uh, she says, or no, I guess we kind of have this, and then they create this. Harpo, uh, which is funny. Harpo like falls through. That's his shtick through the movie, just falling through, falling through the ceiling. roofs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they open up this uh, what's called a juke joint. Juke joint I yeah. had never heard of that term before. No. Before this, and she, there's just a few funny quotes. Uh, like, oh my gosh, this one guy. Whenever she's first singing in that juke joint, he's like, "Girl, I'll drink your bath water." Mm-hmm. I'm like. You never heard that before? Uh, so there's gross. a no doubt. There's a no doubt song that's that's about bathwater. Oh like really? That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was so funny but disgusting at the same time. Yeah, gross. Uh she also says oh, I think this was uh, I can't remember who said this, but it says my job ain't to fight her battle it's to love her and take her where she wants to go okay so harpo and sophia Sophia, right right so they had started beating on each other because well that was you know to backtrack a little bit Mm -hmm. both albert and Celie told harpo to beat sophia because she wasn't in line in line right so well she ain't about to stand for that and so she one of the best Best scenes, best quotes after they have these beaten. She comes out of the woods and she's like, she said, you told Harpo to beat me. Yeah. She said, I never. She's like, I've had to fight my whole life. To, like, I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm sure you quoted. That yeah. One. Yeah. It's like, I've had to fight my whole life. I had to fight my daddy. I had to fight my uncles. I had to fight my brothers. But I never thought I had to fight in my own house. Oh, and I yeah. love Harpo. God knows I do. Mm-hmm. But I'll kill him dead mm-hmm. before I let him beat me. Right. And uh, that's like. Such a good scene. Yeah. Like. Uh, Oprah, like, going hardcore, you know. (laughs) And so they do this, and they end up splitting up. up, yeah. So she leaves him. Mm -hmm. So he makes this juke joint out of their house. Right. And And, then this um, is her new Her new boyfriend, I can't, Buster, I think was his name. Buster. Mm -hmm. I think he was a boxer or something like that. So 
Uh, but that's what he's... And he's, he's like, why are you here? A woman with, with kids shouldn't be out at the juke joint. And she's like, you know, I deserve to have a good time. Mm-hmm. And, and so Buster says, oh, it ain't, you know, I ain't fighting my woman's battle. I just want to take her and have a good time. Blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. I love I love that line. It's so good. And then Harpo takes her to dance. And that was kind of another funny scene. Mm-hmm. He takes her to dance. And, um, and, and Buster looks at uh, Albert. And he's like, oh, first time... First time I've ever been knocked out without throwing a punch. You know, because he just walks away with her girl. <laughs> right. And mm-hmm. then, so, Harpo's new girlfriend, who's also a very good character. S- Squeak, Squeak or Agnes, as she says Who was the played end. by, like, Ray Don Chong or something like yeah. that. Is, who, she's kind of an 80s, like, classic person. You might not know her too many Mm-mm. times. But um, she is his new girlfriend. And she's like, who is this? And he's like, that's... You know, you know who this is. Anyways, they start fighting. And then one of the comedy reliefs that I like in the mm-hmm. movie, they start, like, fighting. Yeah. Uh, everybody starts fighting. And then the first punch or whatever, because, you know, uh, what's her face? Um, Sophia, she don't mess around. Oh, not like, at all. Like, you come at me, I'm coming at you. Right. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So then the... The sax player or whatever, they're like, oh, time to go. The, you know? the guy shuts the piano. <laughs> the piano He's like, I am yeah. out. And he's like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm going. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, it just breaks out into chaos. I Meanwhile, w- Celie's sitting there just loving it. Mm-hmm. She just... It's like, oh my god, yeah, this look is at good, this crazy. Good shit, you know, yeah. she don't like she don't go out. Right. You know. I think it was just so unbeknownst to her that she was like she even came back for a second, like she look, did. she's like, hey, yeah, like I wanna so check like, this out. Yeah, so um Suge's dragging her out mm. of of the of the place, like, come on, we need to leave. And uh she goes back in and sneaks another fig like she couldn't believe it. Um mm-hmm. but I do. That's yeah, that's it's that's a great it's a great scene. I love that bar bar fight scene. It's a great. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's joint. like classic, like like just random people punching each other and you know <laughs> throwing pianos and right. It seems bar a little, glasses um, and busting uh, beer bottles. It and seems stuff. a little Three Stooges. Uh, <laughs> like it vibes of that. Like it, she was just having a good time. Yeah, you know. Yeah, she was. But um, yeah, I guess from there we. Uh, get a good relationship, like I guess a bond forms between Shug and yes. Celie, and I I love this relationship that they yeah. have. Um, it's funny that you know his they say whore, but like Albert's you know mistress, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I just love it that they both connected mm-hmm. and that she kind of Shug saw something in Celie. Yeah, and, definitely had a connection mm-hmm. there. She she talks about the time that they first met whenever it was like raining really hard mm-hmm. and she says um, whatever she's like oh you're ugly and she's referencing it she's like oh that was just salt and sugar yeah. and I was like I I she like that jealous. one too. I think yeah. we'll use that one from now on mm-hmm. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah there was a little and I was reading on the on the I'm BD thing that um, part of the like there's like a little hint of lesbianism oh, totally. in there. And, um, but, uh, Steven Spielberg, who was the director, mm-hmm. he didn't want to get, you know, at the time really? that wasn't as accepted as mm-hmm. it is today. And he right. didn't want to turn some people off, to off mm-hmm. because of that. And he regrets it now is mm-hmm. what I read. I see. Um, it was definitely insinuated. Um, oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was some kissing and stuff, but they didn't, you know, they didn't show it was, in, yep. But, <laughs> I don't want to say insinuated <laughs> twice in two yeah. sentences, but yeah, it was insinuated. Yeah, it was that they definitely got together, like, so. Oh, they're about to make out or whatever. Mm-hmm, um, so, but yeah, she definitely like falls in love mm-hmm. with Shug after that. Mm-hmm. She says like, there's like, she's, she's, she's honey, honey and, and I'm, I'm a bee. A bee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so she like follows her around and she's just totally enthralled mm-hmm. with her. Yeah. And she ends up just, uh, this juke joint, she, I guess, gets those chops. She basically is re- rehabilitated and she, um, sings in this juke joint and then goes on the road again yeah. and was planning to, to join her, mm-hmm. um, in that. And, you know, eventually, you know, that doesn't happen. Yeah. I think she gets cold feet, that timid part of her as she well speak up for herself yeah. exactly and you know from there we get into um sophia and uh, this lady named millie a white woman named millie oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh she's uh, i guess they're passing through a certain town and um her sophia's new husband um, i can't remember exactly the interaction but she 
kind of pops off at Millie, this white woman who's, I guess, the wife of a, she's the mayor. She's somebody, mm-hmm. yeah. She's somebody, somebody important. important. Yeah. And so she says, like, oh, wow, your kids are so clean and well-behaved and blah, blah, blah. Trying you know, she's kiss doting them and, on them and stuff. Yeah. And, and Sophia's like, you know, you better back up, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she's like, do you want to come work for me? And she's like, no. And okay. she said, I'm sorry, what? Right. And back then, you did just didn't You just tell wouldn't say that, yeah. White just, people those... know, you know, to in that you know, land. And uh, she's like, what? And she's like, hell no. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so yeah, then the I husband comes in and he tries starts, to intervene and yeah, she and just gets gives ugly him one. real fast. Mm-hmm. There's another a, very, very hard scene to watch. Yeah, because they kind of mob her. Yeah, uh, for sure. There's this car that passes by and, you know, it, it's insinuated that she punches him, yeah. the, the dude or they whatever. They, like, block it out. Yeah. They, she tells her husband, she's like, get the kids, get out of here. Yeah, it, she's like, take she, my babies out of here. Mm-hmm. She's, she kind of gets surrounded by these white people yeah. and gets basically pistol whipped. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it kind of exactly. actually fucks up her face. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is really sad because that's when... That's one thing she I... She changes. Yeah, exactly. That's it's exactly sad. what I was getting at. Yeah, she changes. Uh, she kind of becomes more timid mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it's becomes the maid uh, yeah. for, you know, Miss Millie. Miss Millie. And... <sighs> she does some jail, jail time first and then yeah. becomes the maid. The maid. And, or, you know, like, I guess, I don't know, more than a maid, I would say. You know, she's like her... Pers- personal assistant. Something. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's kind of a fancy so, word, but... Yeah. Yeah, know, for... Yeah. <laughs> that's her... A- her person yeah so yeah it was really sad to see that um but you know we'll we'll you know get the ending of that which i i really like but uh this is when kind of sugar returns and she still likes millie or excuse me not Celia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's funny uh but you know they still have that connection yeah. and uh i guess the husband Shug's husband and then uh albert kind of hit it off and they go off and mm-hmm. in the meantime they are trying to find the letters mm-hmm. from Nettie um, yeah her sister well so I and I didn't get to watch it today but I just remember like so because Suge does not care to so Albert has told Seely to stay out of the mailbox mm-hmm. like I have fixed it so I will know if you mess with this mailbox so right. don't you ever get the mail mm-hmm. so Suge she don't care about that I I'm here. I'm going to get the mail if I want to, you know. I had a contract coming from Memphis or something. um, Yeah, yeah. So she, so she gets the mail and she sees the letter from Nettie. Yeah. From Nettie. And then they start hunting. Ransacking that, that upper floor trying to find it. And they, you know, eventually do it's like under a a mousetrap and under the floorboards and things like that. He's got it all rigged up for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she finds it and then just starts, you know, Reading, reading these him. letters uh, and kind of gives Nettie's story. Nettie becomes a, uh, a I'm going to say maid, mm. but I can't remember if that's exactly what was used. But she becomes a maid for the... Or like a nanny or something. Yeah, for... Maybe. At a the beginning, we didn't mention wife. it, but there is a moment whenever um, Celie goes into town and she sees her mm-hmm. son, or her she daughter. feels her daughter, right? Yeah, yeah. Olivia. Feels that it's her daughter, and it, you know all the facts are lining up with mm-hmm. it. And, and Nettie actually becomes the nanny maid of that couple, yeah, who adopted these two. Her children. two children, mm-hmm. yeah, and they go off to Africa, and there's a uh, missionaries, know, missionaries, think, right? exactly, and it. You know, it doesn't go into it much, but there's like some, you know, governmental stuff, uh, something about building a road or something, and it goes right through their land and, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of. Also. You know, that's pretty, you know, sad part of it, but, you know, it kind of, she's growing up with um, Celie's daughter and Mm -hmm. son. So that that was nice that, you know, she says in the letter or something like the family's together or something like that. And so that was nice. I I really enjoyed that and was planning on returning, but had some immigration paperwork problems. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that was nice. And, uh, I guess from there, you know, Nettie Celie, she gets hit by Albert while reading these letters and, uh, I guess it was just really pertinent for her, which is a good part of the movie. It kind of like builds up whenever she's about to shave Albert or mm, Mister, yeah. And uh, paralleled with uh, Nettie's story with the son and the daughter 
um, with these Being African like tribes, tribal marks, yeah, or something. like cut like around the eye or you yeah. know, cheek cheekbone or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, a great scene. And then Suge like comes. She, I guess she just. I don't know why Suge would like, know would that know that, yeah, but she like pops into action. Is like yeah. before about to shave. Yeah, you know. Well, Albert. he tells her she shaves him numerous times throughout the movie, mm-hmm. and he tells her in the very beginning when she's young, "If you cut me, I'm going to kill you." Yeah, and so she's always super scared to cut him, but you know she's kind of at the end of her rope, like right. You know, you really, really messed me up, mm-hmm. and so yeah. yeah. So then it starts sharpening, but you know, should eventually before going into essentially for the kill, like, stops her. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's when, I guess, kind of, I don't know, there was some, like, I guess, light switch moment for her because uh, not long after we get the dinner table scene, which Mm -hmm. is my favorite scene of the movie, my favorite scene. When when Celie finally loses it and lets it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and Sophia, her, you know, that spunk that she had lost Mm -hmm. with, um, you know, being Millie's Mm -hmm. maid or, you know, just being in jail for so long, that light switch gets turned back on. Mm -hmm. And I love, I just love that scene. Um, Celie's standing up for herself. Sophia's like, Oh yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm ready. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I love that part. Just standing up, like really giving Albert the shit, like telling him what's up. And oh that was that that is a very powerful scene. Very much so. Absolutely. You know, I I don't think I put it in the uh, trivia, but I think that Oprah's part in that she totally improvised. Steven Spielberg told her to improvise that. Yeah, just Mm -hmm. go with it. So Mm uh yeah, I love that scene. It's just so moving. Like she's finally standing up for herself yeah. after so long, and she said, um, "So she grabbed like a knife, like you know, they're, I mean, they're having like a big family dinner. Mm-hmm. So she grabs the knife mm-hmm. and she like goes it's, after mm-hmm. Albert, puts it in his throat, you know, and they're like, you know, don't. He's not worth he's it. He's not worth it. You know, don't don't trade. You know, whatever. And he's like, he like kind of." cuts at her you know like um like insults her in some way i Mm -hmm. can't exactly remember what he says like oh you know my house hadn't been clean since my first wife died or some weird thing some stab and and he's like if you leave don't ever ask me for anything and she just slams the table she's like did i ever ask you for anything Mm -hmm. not one goddamn thing you know Mm -hmm. and um she's just like really letting him have it you know and you're like yeah finally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know gives her Gives them the, gives them the tea, mm-hmm. as as the younger kids would say. <laughs> as the kids say. Um, I wrote down a few quotes from this scene that I I just they stuck out. At Sophia, Oprah's character, she says, "I've had an I've had enough bad luck to make me laugh for the rest of my life." Because I guess um, Albert's dad, old Mister, mm. he is like, "Oh my God, she's gone crazy looking at Sophia." Oh, after yeah, yeah, yeah. Celie pops off, and she's yeah. like, "That's whenever Sophia clicks back on or gets that that you know pizzazz back." Yeah. And yeah. Uh, she, she says this line, "I've had enough. I've had enough bad luck to make me laugh for the rest of my life." Mm-hmm. And I, I love that line; it's so good. But this other one, whenever um, Celie's leaving, she says, "I may be poor, black." And it may be ugly, uh, but at least I'm here. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's such a good, yeah. that's such a yeah. good yeah. line. Like, you know, I'm not black, but that's, it's still so moving mm-hmm. to me. So, yeah. you know, from there, Albert kind of goes on a downward slope. You know, yeah. he's pathetic. He's pathetic. Mm-hmm. And yeah. chickens in the kitchen, goats eating shit, you mm-hmm. know, he's the drunk dad, all the time. Dad comes to check him out and he's just yeah. like, get out of here. Like, yeah. you, you just let me wallow or yeah. whatever. So. Yeah, he's a mess. Yeah, definitely. He's um, lost both of his girls, Shug and Sophia. Yeah, no, Shug and yeah, exactly. So at the, at this moment in the movie, I was just like, I was over Danny Glover, just like that domestic abuse thing. I just can't can't deal with that. So I was kind of glad that that had happened. That's when Seely's paw dies. Yep. I'm putting quotes, air yeah. air quotes here because that's when we realized that it's not that's not her real, her real dad. Father. Yeah, the one before the husband before that was her real mm-hmm. dad and mm-hmm. didn't even really know there's another line that says which is i have heard in i feel like 
at least the movie every year I hear the line, uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah. Um, I That's feel a common saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if this one pioneered that phrase or whatever, <laughs> but I, yeah, I've definitely heard this before, but it was, yeah, I wrote that down cause it was pertinent, but kind of wrapping up that's when you know chug chug comes back and there's a great scene she you know i mentioned she had some father issues and he's the preacher and there's a great scene where they're at the juke joint having a good this time is- and then at the church they're having a another good time yeah. uh, just singing the gospel or whatever and yeah like at the juke joint it kind of mellows out and they hear the church and yeah. then you know along with Shug and i mean like everybody's congregating <laughs> like it's just a mass and then they bust in on the church and yeah. start that having is, a good time together. It's pretty, uh, to be an emotional scene. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I um, like gospel music for some reason, like really like hard, like hits me in my soul. And you I'm and not, I don't know about like, I don't, you guess like I'm not Christian. I'm mm-hmm. pagan. Right. So, but just, I just love gospel music. Right. I it's, just it's just moving. Love it. Yeah. And this scene between the choir and Celie's like, not Celie, I'm sorry. Shug. Shug is like singing and walking from the juke joint to the church mm-hmm. with like the band behind her. And everybody's like, yeah, let's go, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they, like you said, walk into the church and they're all singing the same song together. It is like it's, it's amazing. Good. It's good. Yeah. It, I I really enjoy it. like just like you said. I I love the gospel music. I don't know yeah. what it is about it. They just yeah, you know they put their soul into it. Yeah. So I think that's you know, it's moving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You you they said could it perfectly. Singing anything, just the sound of their voices. You know, just like me. Hmm. Hmm. And you know, uh, there was nice resolution between her and her, her dad. And her father, it was yeah. it was good. Mm-hmm. You know, finally like hugged her back and uh, so so. So good. So good. I love this movie. And we move on to, um, I guess Albert kind of gets not like a change of heart, but goes and does the immigration paperwork for Mm -hmm. Nettie coming back from Africa. And you even see him whenever they reunite at the end, him like walking in in the the back. And um, that was, you know, I do not like Albert's character, you know, Danny Glover's character, but that was, it's interesting because I, sometimes I feel like people, they do get set in their ways. However, people can change as well. Yeah. I, you know, with the back and forth that he was just such a pressing figure in this movie, like really a bad figure. Like there's always intimidating or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still thought bad of him, but it was nice to see that. I guess shine Some sort through. of redemption. In yeah, the, like, yeah. You did something good. Okay, mm-hmm, so I don't totally hate you. I just kind of hate you. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, they show a scene where he um, has all this money stashed away in like the chicken coop or something, mm-hmm. and he goes and and takes this money out, you know, to do the paperwork and stuff. And right, that so. was kind of a a good mm-hmm. scene. And, and meanwhile, then- Seely's making pants. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love that. Sophia comes She's with like her got husband. She's like a pant shop or something, and Harpo and, and uh, Sophia. Sophia are back together now, mm-hmm. and, and he, you know, they both can wear the same thing. Yeah, I love, I love those. I wish I could find those. <laughs> I would love to wear them. Oh They're my so, God. they like match, and I love it. Yeah, so, she so said, good. Well, where are you going to wear those pants? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At home, for myself. <laughs> Uh, but you know that allows Nettie return, and this is kind of wraps up the movie. Yeah. Um, Nettie returns and introduces uh, Celie to son Adam, and then her daughter Olivia. Olivia. And it's nice, heartwarming. And through the whole movie, they do this like patty cake thing. Uh, oh yeah, Maca, yeah, yeah. I, Macadaka I, or something like that. It was just know. a great thing that they did or whatever. So it was it was nice. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed. It, it I, wasn't as moving as I thought it would be, but at the end, um, at the end, like oh, with the God. like her meeting the daughter and the son, yeah. Um, and he's like, but they her have, re- they sound like African, you know, and he's mm-hmm. like saying "mama, mom," and they can't, like, they don't even speak English. I mm-hmm. don't know, right? It doesn't obviously a barrier, memory, or you know, whatever, you know? and uh, just seeing them right. So they're driving down the the road, you know. And so every everybody's why is everybody at the at this house like everybody's hanging out all of a sudden everybody's like coming out of the house like right. oh there's someone coming down the road you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you see them get out of the car and they're like all their stuff's like billowing in the wind you mm-hmm. know all their like African 
like, fabrics or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know? Scarves or and, uh, go, yeah. and they're all like, oh, what's going on? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> here. And so, so they like walk out and see it. I am losing my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm crying so hard. <laughs> it's, it, I say that, but I think why I said that was because I felt more with Nettie and her yeah. obviously oh, being reunited. Felt like the relationship between the two sisters mm-hmm. was yeah. made more impactful yeah, yeah. than the, yeah. the kids. I could so. see that. I could but, see that. And that's, you know, kind of where the, the credits roll. They're playing that yeah. patty cake game. Right. And, and then Albert's off in the background with his horse, you mm-hmm. know, just by himself. Right. And, and so, oh. yeah, no. Oh, great, 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 great movie. I love it. Let's go ahead and I want to jump into the likes uh, because I just can't gush about this movie more. Oh, I'm so um, glad that you liked it. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I Each and every one of the uh, actors in this movie did a wonderful, wonderful job. You know, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, this is like one of her firsts as well. Um, it actually, this is her breakout because, like, in the opening credits, it says introducing okay. Whoopi Goldberg. This is her first movie. And I was just like, oh, this is, this is a nice, nice opener. <laughs> you know, I know, it's hard to believe this was 1985. Mm-hmm. Is that? Gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, I loved her, loved, loved Oprah. Though I didn't like the character of Mr. Danny Glover, does a great job, Very good job. of, yeah. Um, playing that, that yeah. thing so uh you know all around great all around great um you know i feel like in the movie they do a great job of um using silence i think maybe that's with the help of the orchestra behind mm-hmm. them of really making those pauses or whatever very impactful mm-hmm. like even during the the scene whatever mister's going after netty before she gets kicked out there's no word spoken it's just like i like yeah yeah. Eyes and, and it's like like the silent you can hear like the jingling of the horses and the trotting and just like the wind mm-hmm. or you know, little sounds that kinda right. am- and amplify think it, I think. There was no there was no actual like back and forth conversation. No, there was no conversation. But it just like yeah. you said it before, like it's just a Well she tells saying. him like towards the end of it, like I- I'm on my way to school, like mm-hmm. what are you doing? You right. know, and then you know, yeah, proceeds, but yeah. yeah, so that's a good example of the silence, but yeah, no, mm-hmm. it, it's great. And then, you know, it's funny, I, I put it on here in the outline that, you know, for a while there, whenever I was growing up, I was like, I'm gonna become an actor. I love, I love acting. I wanted to and be an actor too. Really? I did. Oh, that's all. You know who Corey Haim is? No, I don't. Oh my God. Who's that? Dude. Okay. Lost Boys. <gasps> Yes. Uh, you know Corey Haim, Corey Feldman. This is the dude with the blonde hair. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was in love with him. Mm -hmm. When I was, you know, when you were saying vampires earlier, I was about to mention Lost Boys, and I was like, I just have a feeling that you like it. And I honestly thought, and I don't know, your dad probably wouldn't know this because you know he's older than me. (laughs) Um, but I thought I was going to be an actress. Moved to LA uh-huh. and marry Corey Haim. Oh, nice. Like, that was like, <laughs> when I was like in the seventh or eighth grade, like that's legit what I thought I was going to be doing. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> goals. <laughs> so, yeah. Rip that's... Corey Haim, though, because he did pass away, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. You got to find somebody else now. I know. I know. <laughs> I got uh, my man. Well, yeah, I was about to say, we're about to move to, to L.A. <laughs> we're moving to L.A., baby. Right? Uh, no, but yeah, I, I did so. I did also want to be an actress. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. And yeah, I mean, I mentioned really briefly, but yeah, I, I love the soundtrack for this movie. It's mm-hmm. not, it, there was no, you know, pops, you know, pop hits or no, whatever. No, it was just this no, orchestral. It's, it's just yes, yes. made Very it clean. so much more. Yeah. Moving, yeah. I guess I would say. So. I mean, just the movie in general, like the way it was shot. I mean, it is Steven Spielberg, for mm-hmm. crying out loud. Right. Um, the way it was shot, the sounds, the you know, just the scenes in general, just very, very good. Yeah, I yeah. think. What uh, What's some of your likes? You, you were just saying a few, but well, um. I mean, I don't know. I I like the whole movie in general, but I like, um, you know, sometimes they'll just show like, you know, a field or a tree or something. And it's just so vibrant. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, the beginning and the end of the movie, yeah, it shows that field yeah. of, I don't know what flower that I is, don't know. but it's purple. It's purple. <laughs> yes. it's purple. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I like 
the the scenes where Celie's kind of coming in to her own, you know, like when she's cleaning the kitchen or when she's cooking a meal or, you know, when she's engaging with uh, Suge, like when she sings her that song in the juke joint, you know, yeah. and, and uh, she's Miss Celie's blues. Yes, Miss Celie boo. I cry. I almost cried that that Same. scene too. Same. And um, and she's trying to get her out of, out of her shell, and she's like. Uh, and she makes her smile in yes. the mirror, you know, and she's like, well, because in the beginning of the movie, her dad says, like, Covered you know, smile. you have, like, the ugliest smile I've ever seen, mm-hmm. you know, so she always covers her face when she wants to smile. Mm-hmm. And um, so she makes her, like, stand in front of the mirror. Mm. Holds and, down her arms. And, like, you know, gets her to smile, and she just busts out laughing. Mm-hmm. Those little moments like that, I just... I just find really endearing, Agreed. I guess. Agreed. You know? Yeah, that was great. That was a great part. You know, I, it's funny you say that because I, this is totally mm, related, I guess. But I am I do not like dancing whatsoever. <laughs> like, I hate dancing. It's just I not. Like the idea. <laughs> the concept of it. But like actual execution, Dancing, exactly. Probably not my best. Uh, exactly. Thing. I, had, I have a close friend who <laughs> kind of did that for me with the smile thing. Like it's like trying to get me to dance, and yeah, it, it's nice because I I'm personally trying to work on myself, like do things I wouldn't yeah, normally yeah. do. So it was nice to see that she was forcing her to do something yeah. that was positive. Yeah. And I think dancing is, you know, to a, gr- a degree, definitely. But um, I saw that parallel and I was like, oh, yeah. I, love, I love this. Hits, I love it. Yeah. So, no. um, yeah, we don't have too much more, but I, I do want to talk about, you know, I like a lot of things, but I also dislike a lot of things. Do you? <laughs> so with me for this movie, I think the really only the big dislike I have with is the domestic abuse part yeah. of it. Um, I but don't you know what, it's like that's it's a part of the that but, was like a thing that mm-hmm. was happening. I mean, it, I know it happens today, not as prevalent as it was back then, but that was the way. That it's like it was. Though, not that it's okay, but right. yeah, it's like know? though I disliked it, I see why they use that mm-hmm. device to you know elicit those feelings yeah. in the movie. Oh, so, for sure. so yeah, other than that, I, I, it's hard to watch, but I see where it was needed. Yeah. So yeah, do you do you have any dislikes with it? Not not really. I mean. Sometimes you won't get like a full story. Maybe you'll want a little bit more mm-hmm. of a, a story like, you know, how did Suge come to be with Albert or, you know, like how did, what's her story? There's right. got to be some more. What's the dead wife's story or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like how did your wife die? Why, you know, and why, why did, uh, why did Albert and, and Celie never have any kids of their own. Did they have any kids? I don't oh, know. Totally. Yeah. Because you know what I mean, they were I, all his kids, and they were just running around. She's, you mm-hmm. know, freaking fertile, fertile Myrtle over here. Right. Oh my you gosh. Know? Like, yeah. Why aren't they having more kids? Because they were having sex. I know. I think there was because uh, there was three kids whenever she showed up uh-huh. to the house, and then whenever Nettie gets kicked out. There's like twelve or more well, running around, and I don't know if that was the just the hanging around the house neighbor. type of thing. That was or... one scene when um, when uh, Harpo and um, Sophia were getting their house ready, and there's just kids everywhere, just little kids just running around, and mm-hmm. she screams at them. She said, "Y'all get get on back to your own house or wherever you come oh, from," you know. Right. So there might just be little kids hmm. running around. The, That's a good I point. Mean, they're like in the country. Yeah. <laughs> coming from you know um <laughs> out of the woodwork yeah you know so i always wondered like did they have any kids because yeah. that wasn't totally explained no. but i don't think that they did hmm. I, yeah I, now that you're saying that i don't think yeah. really there so, is i mean there's a couple of maybe plot holes is that the yeah. mm-hmm. right word mm-hmm. uh maybe some plot holes that i would have gone with but otherwise i love this movie start to finish it yeah. is hard it's a hard movie yeah um definitely to, to watch and you know especially if you've ever experienced things like that oh, you yeah. know like Brings those feelings. Sexual abuse mm-hmm. or domestic abuse or, right. you know, shit like that. Just like that. It's like triggers, right. you know. Definitely. And I've been fortunate that I've not had those things. Mm-hmm. So right. um, maybe I can watch it with an empathetic um, I, yeah. view, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so. But, yeah, it would be hard for some people, I think. Yeah. And. Yes, I couldn't agree more with you. I oh, I'll get into the closing segment. It's kind of I have this award segment. I'm sure you've you've listened to the podcast. Watched, so. Yes, I have listened to your <laughs> podcast many many times. Yeah, the award segment, that straight up classic, straight up classic. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. Probably out of 
though I've watched a, quite a few movies on this podcast, I think that this one is definitely one of the definitely top three that really? I've watched. I love this movie. Good. I just good, 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 good acting. I love Oprah. I love Whoopi Goldberg. Just a overall great movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I was gonna say too? I was thinking about this earlier that even though Oprah is a fantastic actress in this and i've seen mm-hmm. her in a couple of other movies but i don't consider her an actress no. i don't really know what i class for just a a public figure you know like a totally she's got her own she got her own his network name? uh tony it's not tony he's real tall and he's like you know a motivational speaker oh tony robbins ah, tony yes. Ro- mm-hmm. it's like tony robbins she's got her own show she's like just mm-hmm. you know in everything and i love her love 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 oprah i can't help it mm-hmm. um but I don't consider her an actress. She's phenomenal in this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with an F. I, uh, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I said phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> Bits of phenomenal. Yeah, couldn't um, agree more. Love, but yeah, love Oprah. Um, what do you? Who do you think the least important character of the movie is? <sighs> Albert Stad. Old Mister. Yeah. Yeah. I. He shows up maybe two or three times just to kind of. Be crack additive. him in the nuts or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's. I don't know what that is about. Mm. I don't really. I, I see where you're coming from. I would say Millie. Don't, Millie, definitely Miss Millie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she has a few like. Yeah, you she know. doesn't know how to drive, which is funny. What? Well, that's another. Oh my god. That's another These, great scene. The oh. scene where she's driving and it's like a comedy thing, right? And she's she's sad. She, you know, she goes in the store and she. But when she gets in the car and she starts the car, all the guy are all the people that are in the street <laughs> just like run for their <laughs> lives. Like that's a good little comedy mm-hmm. thing set in a very serious situation. Right. Yeah. They're oh. like, like, oh, get, get out of the way. She's driving, you know. Yeah. She's like, look at me, I'm driving. Oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun, you know. Mm-hmm. I didn't mention it at all, but that scene that where she's having trouble like leaving yeah. Sophia's place, yep. that that scene's hard to watch mm-hmm. because she felt she's like she's so being attacked. Yeah, yeah, definitely. She's so scared. Just, racist people yeah yeah uh, but it was so sad that like sophie only got like a moment with her family and and had to go but yeah miss millie but i also thought maybe harpo a little bit um he really other than being that husband to sophia yeah sophia was more the i more actually the, really you know. liked him when he was a little boy yeah um so he, <laughs> there was a couple of scenes where he was like laying on the on the swing and he just like gives Seely some rando look, you know, and mm-hmm. they have little connection because, you know, he gets he gets some crap from from Albert too and so yeah. does her. So maybe there's a little bond there. But he's a cute who whoever the actor is that played the young the young one. Uh you know, the with him trying to get the horse saddled and stuff. It just it was kind of cute, you know, like yeah. a little boy trying mm-hmm. to please his dad but um yeah, yeah i like i like harpo yeah bit. so I, yeah i i it, it was hard for me to pick a least important character because each for one sure. has their own place yeah or maybe uh squeak squeak that's yeah, good that's you good know, choice she, yeah. uh, she being that second uh, second wife to yeah you know and harpo. she's still like a member of their little family or whatever even after like i think um uh harpo and and uh, Sophia get back together. I think they're back together. I, I mm-hmm. just kind of assumed or whatever. Right. But but she's still like around in the you know in the just a part of the clan family. Now. Didn't she mm-hmm. like she's part of the very ending scene where they all coming out and they're like they're having lemonade. Aren't You're right. They? Isn't yeah. she there? Yeah, I think um, so. So they're having so Celie gets the the family house right the original house that she grew up in. She gets it because that was. Her her dad's her dad's right, house, yeah. um, her real dad's. So everybody's living there now, right? You know, yeah. every, Squeak and Sophia and Harpo and everybody except mm-hmm. Albert, of course. Yeah, um, definitely got that clan mentality. But yeah, so like, so I'm like, why? What does she? It's a good. That's a good. That's a good answer. Here. Yeah, Squeak. but she did. She did have a couple good scenes where she said like, "Squeak's not my real name." I can't remember what she Agnes said or, or something. Uh, yeah, something real sweet. I don't even know why they called her Squeak, but she did have a little. She had a little piece, but I don't think she was really important to mm-hmm. the story right. overall. Yeah, not at so. all. Let's see standout moments. I love the dinner scene. My yeah. favorite. Mm-hmm. What about you? Boy, they um. 
probably the choir scene and Shug coming to meet the dad. Good choice. Yeah. Good choice. Uh, let's get into the last uh, closing segment, IMDb Trivia. I have mine here. It says Sophia's speech. I think, yeah, I mentioned it. Uh, and it's that Sophia's uh, part in that dinner scene, mm-hmm. it was improvised. Yeah. Steven Spielberg told Pretty her cool. just to say how much she meant to her whenever she saw Sophia at her low in the mm-hmm. general store. The store. And, uh, yeah, because she- her eye was all busted up, so she couldn't see the list. So. Mm-hmm. Sidley comes and grabs the list for her and helps her out with with Miss Millie. Yeah, yeah, great, great part. I I, I love. I just, I think out of everybody, I love Oprah in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite. Yeah, but uh, you have two actually. Did you want to? Leonardo DiCaprio said that this movie was what made him want to start acting. <sighs> Leonardo isn't that, DiCaprio. Isn't that the isn't that funny we were talking about us being actors and then Leo saying Leonardo this? Leonardo DiCaprio. He's also primo phenomenal definitely yes i love i love leonardo dicaprio what else did i say oh and i think we we talked about it i think like, oh, oh, that it's oprah's, oprah's first movie mm-hmm. yeah knocked it out of the I park could, oprah oh my goodness seriously like way to start big huh right, exactly. but yeah no like leonardo dicaprio i mean if you think about it like he's probably my age maybe is he in his mid to late 40s yeah, I, I don't know so. yeah so he could have seen this movie at 11 and be like, hmm, I want to do that. You know? Probably had that same thought right around <laughs> the same go time you did. I'm going to marry somebody in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, no, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, we're actually, yeah, we're done. Thank you. Firstly, thank you so much yeah, for um, I was so excited when you asked me. I was like, oh, my God, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I. it's funny because I thought you were going to pick Gone with the Wind. That's really? one of our, uh, my Granny Lizzie's favorite, one of my Granny Lizzie's favorite movies. So, I thought you were going to pick yeah, that so one. Yeah, so funny story about that. I actually have only seen that movie one time. Oh, yeah? And it was well after she passed away. Really? My, yeah. Mom passed away in, uh, three years ago. And she was obsessed with Gone with the Wind. Anything, like, anything. Um, Related to it. I remember yeah. she used to have the... Um, Plates like, and dolls and mm-hmm. just... Like branded Barbie dolls of everything, Gone with the yeah. Everything she can get her little hands on. Mm-hmm. And um, so I had never seen it growing up. I'm, mm-hmm. She must have watched it when I wasn't around. I don't know. Right. Um, but uh, once after she died at the movie theater... Mm-hmm. You know, back when we could go to the movies. I don't right. know if y'all can see movies here, but ours isn't open yet. Yeah. Um, I won't go. So they have, like, uh, classic movies. Classic movie night. Yeah, yeah, they, like, had, you know, different ones for whatever. And Gone with the Wind was one. So mm-hmm. we all went, like, me and my husband and uh, the girls and uh, Mike's daughter, nice. Maria. And so we all went. And it's really long. And it was not... I. It, if you haven't seen that one, you should put it on your list because I wouldn't, I didn't like it as much as I thought that I was going to. And that, that's my concern with me wanting to watch it. Is that, yeah. I mean, there's a few. It was hard. Like it was, I was like, wait, what is happening right now? Apparently like, there's like a lot of like chat. I think that one's based off a book too. It is. Yeah. 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 We so. have, the, we, we got the book. Um, I haven't read that either, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no. Yeah. So I, that's, that was mom's favorite movie, but I watched it once and was like, I wish, I wish that I had watched that while she was alive so I could be like, what the hell what are they you gr- thinking? Granny, what's, what, what, why? <laughs> what are you watching this for? This is like. I'm sure this, she would have gotten I mean, up and like gone to the bathroom and just like take breaks in between. So it wasn't yeah, as bad. That was like an intermission and it was super, super long. And I know it's a classic movie. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was a lot. It, it's like this. I mean, there's... It is a very like, long movie, this one, too. It's like uh, two hours 30. Yeah, it was... That one has, like... Like... Uh, I don't even know. Like, abortion or losing babies or mm-hmm. physical abuse. Just all kinds of weird hmm. stuff. Parallels you know? with this movie a little bit. A little bit. A li- yeah. It's really hard to watch. And I thought, what the heck is going on here? But, right. yeah, so unfortunately... I can't remember what the other two movies were. You had a lot of good movies <laughs> on your list. <laughs> Um, Maybe we'll say. So another, now I'm gonna day. be like, I'm gonna send you movies. Be like, add this to your list. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, oh, I know what it was: Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. I love that movie. Mike That's does the not Jim Carrey. Jim one? Carrey, who I also 
a door, mm-hmm. um, but it's different. It's not like your normal. I, I when you did the Truman Show oh, episode. Yeah. God, I love the Truman Show. Really? Love, yeah, love, love. I love that movie. It's a good um, one. But it's different. It's different like that, and it's not as funny. It's yeah. kind of weird and quirky and stuff like that. Hmm. But if you haven't seen that one yet, I, I. Put, put my check mark by there, like Janelle right. recommends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe another episode later on. Yeah, I, I mean, we could do it like via. Uh, oh yeah, you can come up to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the You Haven't Seen That Movie podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Also, you know, another big, big, big thank you for uh, Janelle Sanders to come and join me. You're very welcome. If you want to show your support for the You Haven't Seen That Movie podcast, check out our Facebook group page and our Instagram page as well. Like the movie, hate it, let us know by calling our voicemail. Both Instagram and Facebook have call buttons, so you can literally just tap and, and give it a call. So, Oh, and if you leave your address, I'll send you a sticker. So, Other than that, see you next week. Bye-bye. 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 Week.